it's time to build and paint the Iron Her Hearth Guard of the Leagues of Otan. I won't be going through the step-by-step -step build process, but I will cover magnetization. Because of the time-consuming nature of this process, I consider this optional. However, it gives you a lot more flexibility on how you field your units. Looking through the instructions, I've decided that the gun is not worth magnetizing. However, the left arm is. You will have the option of fielding a concussion hammer, a plasma blade, or a concussion gauntlet. What you will need is 4x1mm rare earth magnets that are available on Amazon. To keep track of magnet polarity, I made this little jig. I put a positive on one end and negative on the other, or vice versa. I use a spare Allen key wrench, and I put one magnet of one polarity on one end, and then I flip the magnet stack over, and I put the other polarity on the other end. I super glue these magnets in place. You notice I added blue tape to this jig, and I do that because the blue tape allows the magnet to slide off easily during the build process, which you will see a little bit later. Here are the weapon bits I will be magnetizing. I start with the champion or the hasir, and what I do is I remove some material from his left arm right here. I want to make it nice and smooth so I can attach a magnet to it. Next, I pick one polarity on my jig and I put one magnet on that pole like this. For magnets, you want to use super glue, not plastic glue. Apply the super glue onto the flat area that we just created and then slowly attach the magnet to it and then this is where the blue tape helps the magnet slide off a little bit easier. I use my nail, keep it in place and then slide it off the jig and then move it into place and allow it to cure. For the arm portion, I switch the polarity of the jig to the other end. I place a magnet on that end. This magnet is going to go on this arm in this area right here. Repeat this process for the concussion hammer arm as well. Now for the weapon portions. It doesn't really matter what polarity you use, but you're going to be putting the same polarity into both these cavities right here. So pick a polarity, apply some glue into those cavities, and drop the magnet in. What it's going to attach to on the arm will have the opposite polarity. So put a magnet on the other end and in this cavity in the arm, put some super glue in it and slide the magnet in place. Now to test to see if everything works. If you have the polarities correct, the arm should be able to snap onto the body of the champion like this. And all the weapons should be able to snap onto the arm and you can change between the plasma blade and the concussion gauntlet. Pop the arm off and now try the hammer and it should be able to snap in place like this. The rest of the hearth guard just have two options, plasma blade or concussion gauntlet. Just go ahead and fill this cavity here with a magnet of one polarity and make sure the polarity is the same as the one you did for the champion. So now you can put any blade or any gauntlet on any of the models. On an unrelated note, Make sure you drill the barrels of all your guns. This is a fairly fast process, especially if you drill a very shallow hole. This really doesn't take long to do and you can do it during the build process. Everything should now be ready and it's time to start painting. Like in the previous two videos in this series, I'll be using the zenithal priming method. This starts with a black primer on all the parts. For the loose weapon and arm bits, I put them on a Allen wrench like this and prime it all together. White primer is next and I apply it at a constant 30 degree angle all the way around. It is a light dusting but I do highlight certain areas that I want a little bit lighter. I will be using the same paint scheme that I use with this Iron Hair Champion that I did a few videos ago. However, I'm switching to my new approach which is Zealot Yellow which I will apply on the models with a fairly broad brush. I tried to avoid the face areas, but I did overbrush, so I used some matte white and I just cleaned them up a little bit before the next step. I put a little bit of Crusader skin into my palette 
and I apply it on all the exposed faces. I then use several of these speed paints and I apply them onto the hair and beards of the models. I give the models different colors for variety. I move to army green, which is my army secondary color. This color goes on all the pauldrons and the left powered fists. I also put them on the knee guards. I paint all the concussion gauntlets this color as well. I also almost forgot the champion's left powered fist, which I paint here separately. Green black speed paint goes on the guns and the grenade launcher. I also put it in any exposed joint areas. The plasma blade bits also get grim black. Black also goes on the head of the concussion hammer. Moving on to gun metal acrylics, this goes on parts of the grenade launcher. The pipings all around the model. The visors on the helmeted heads. The pistons on the front torso, the mechanical spine on the rear torso, the three rivets on the back, parts of the concussion hammer, and with some leftover hardened leather speed paint, I apply it onto the handle of the concussion hammer. Silver is applied to the knuckles of the concussion gauntlets. and the circuits on the plasma blade fists. I use Hylord Blue speed paint on the tassels of the champion. Weapon bronze acrylic is used in several areas, on the champion's totem, the runic markings on all the armor, and the runes on the hammer. For the plasma blades, I start with matte white on all the blade areas. Then, similar to my Berserks video, I wet blend yellow, orange, and red to create the plasma effect. It is important to keep all the paints very wet while you do this so that they mix and create the blending that you see here. Move between the yellow, orange, and red and blend it to your satisfaction. I put the yellow on the inside of the blade, working outwards to orange, and at the very edge, I use red. I use electric blue acrylic paint and I apply it to these two areas in the front torso and also onto the viewing slit. Building my models with the plasma gun, I also apply blue in the plasma areas. Onward to washes, almost done. Strong tone goes on all the areas that I did not speed paint. I accent my model with some white stripes. I use matte white on the center panel of the right pauldron. Matching the style of the rest of my army, I also add a white stripe to the center of the helmets. I apply some white to the sockets of all the eyes. And as usual, I use a toothpick and matte black to apply the pupils on the eyes. As a finishing touch, I use blue tone on the plasma weapons. Onward to decals. 
I cut out the symbols for the Trans-Hyperion Alliance and I soak 5 at a time in water for about 5 seconds. Next, I brush on some microset onto the left pauldron. I lift the loose decal up with my brush, transfer it onto the brush, and then apply it onto the pauldron. I then slowly nudge it into place. I repeat this process for the number on the right pauldron. Onward to basing, just simple Elmer's glue spread with an old brush and some material basing, and that's about it. I clean the rims with some black primer, apply some varnish, and I'm done. Here are my Einher Hearthguard, all completed. Thank you for watching the third installment of this Leagues of Rotan series. If you enjoyed this video and would like to follow on the rest of the series, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the future episodes. Until my next videos, happy hobbying, happy gaming, and I will see you soon.